Welcome to Do It For The Gram and Enneagram Podcast with your host, Certified Enneagram Coach, Milton Stewart, where we do it for the Enneagram, not Instagram. We make moves to improve ourselves and our community. Today, we continue the series on growth work for each type. Today, we're doing the Enneagram 9. Let's do this. Um, so in this episode, I just want to remind you all that the things I'm going to be asking you to do should be challenging. Um, and if it's not challenging, then this number may not be your type because or you've done some supreme growth work already but if it's not challenging in some type of way then this may not be your type or your home base so you might want to check to see if there's a different one or you just might be um, out of sync with um, out of sync with the awareness of who you are right now but it takes time it's a process don't freak out all right so let's go kick it intro music All right, the Enneagram 9. So we're working with them today. Much of the info today is going to come from Ginger's book, My Teacher, The Art of Typing. So the general type description for the 9, as we all know, the peacemaker, harmony, um, you know, that, right? But I'm going to do something a little different, give different descriptors this time. And so when a 9 walks into a new space, besides the fact that there's kind of feeling how everyone else feels and trying to see how they... Um, think and feel about certain situations and how they are in the room, their attention focus is on conflict. And so they're looking for ways to avoid that conflict. And so their receptors are super in tune with where is conflict happening, where everybody else is not necessarily, um, that's not the first thing they're going to notice. But nines are really good at saying oh my goodness there's conflict over there there's conflict over there and it can be subtleties not even just like gigantic forms of conflict where we're like oh my goodness they finna fight no no not that where it's more or less like hmm okay that don't look like that's gonna go too well so i'm gonna slide to the left hmm little conflict there slide to the right hmm not here either crisscross and then they find their way to somewhere that's um more harmonious or peaceful if they can and so the next thing is the false identity. The ego has a way of pushing towards past our character structure to our personality, almost like in a tree. Um, from the roots is our ego. The tree trunk is our character structure. And the leaves and beautiful things we always see, <clears throat> or the things that are just most readily seen, are the uh, leaves which is the personality and so that's the thing that most people see so the ego has a way of pushing a false identity up to try to get what we actually want but it does the opposite so the false identity for the enneagram nine is false harmony so this false harmony is basically a sense that um I cannot do anything or bother anything and everything's going to be okay which is just not true that is not how you actually are true that's not actually how you find true harmony and true peace. A lot of times true harmony and true peace comes through conflict. And so um, the false identity of them is this false harmony. And a lot of times this false harmony in the nine is this um, numbness in a sense where it's like I'm numbed out to a lot of these different things, which will come up in our thought pattern and emotional pattern as we go on. The worldview for the nine is everyone deserves to be respected and heard. I must enable this. This is beautiful in one standpoint on the upside because they're looking around and saying everyone here matters. Everyone is important. Everyone here has a seat at the table. That is so important. We need people to do that. The downside to that is that, yes, everyone does. And they're good at looking at everyone outside of themselves. And it's almost as if they're making sure everyone gets a seat at the table but themselves. So it's super important as a nine that you also realize that 
you are to be respected and heard too because you are important and you matter. The ego ideal. So this is kind of how, um, this is another way the ego pushes out and how we are perceived uh, as that person on our personality um, type of way. So nines, the ego ideal for the nine is the peaceful person. Always easygoing and accepting, never pushy or ambitious. And so I think we know the pros and cons of this, right? Um, seeing the nine as easygoing and accepting, that's cool to a certain extent, but then nines also get tired of it because they're like, I have ambition. I'm not always easygoing. You know, I want to be different ways. I, I can be, you know, pushy for the things that I want, and they can be. But the ego sometimes pushes us to do things that we naturally, um, it pushes us to do things to try to get what we really want deep down in a way that never gets it there. And so it's very compulsive. It's just like, do that. Be the easygoing, accepting person. Just do it. When a nine may be like, no, I don't accept what you're doing or how you act or behave. And so I'm not going to be easygoing. But the compulsion of the ego is like, mm, just go ahead and do it. It's fine. Don't, don't, don't cause any conflict. Just ignore it. And so that can be a huge issue, which nines obviously have to work on. Does your workplace stink because the culture sucks? Are you tired of tolerating people and wish you could all work together cohesively? Does the mere idea of going into work give you anxiety? If you said yes to any one of these, you should probably quit your job. But since you're not going to quit your job, you should contact Kaizen Careers. At Kaizen Careers, we are all about improving workplace performance. We use a unique tool called the Enneagram. The Enneagram helps individuals and organizations become more self-aware. That self-awareness lends into helping organizations with communication, conflict management, and leadership development, ultimately turning self-awareness into self-mastery and creating healthy workplace cultures so you can improve your services and bottom lines. Contact Kaizen Careers at K-A-I-Z-E-N-C-A-R-E-E-R-S.com or Milton at KaizenCareers.com or give us a call at 901 901- Three three four one six forty four. All right, unmet longing. So the unmet longing of the nine is knowing that they matter enough to speak both their truth and take values based action. And so, part of this is for nines wanting to and understanding that they matter, that they matter not just a little bit, not just kinda but a whole lot. And what they have to say is very important. And that they can take values-based action, actions that are based in their values and not everybody else's, and that they can do it. This is what the nine really wants deep down, but the ego is so compulsive to keep this false harmony connected to them and to stay away from conflict that it a lot of times doesn't allow nines to actually get to a place where they can actually speak their truth and to know that they're important enough to make those actions that they need that are based in their own values. So that's going to be something we're going to talk about getting towards for the nine as well. So every type also has a thirst and avoidance. They have something that they are thirsting for and something that they avoid with as much as possible. Nine starts for harmony and comfort. They like peace. They love peace. And when they don't settle for false harmony and false peace, they actually find true harmony and um, true comfort. Nines avoid conflict and ill will. So what does that mean? So um, avoiding conflict, that's pretty obvious. Um, they do... They can, in unhealthy stages, do almost anything to avoid conflict. And primarily, their primary way of dealing with it is to numb out. Um, a nine can literally process and talk to you and act like everything's okay, um, but not really be there in a whole different place mentally. And they're just going about the typical um, run-of-the-mill human reactions about things because they don't want to create more conflict and they don't want to deal with the conflict that may be happening in the room or area where they are. 
and then also ill will. They want to avoid um, the sense of negative, um, which are conflictual. Um, I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> negative and conflicting um, ideas and will towards people um, because they're the peacemaker, right? They they can't be someone who's against other people or people's ideas or different things like that. And But nines are, and they're angry about some things if they have come to grips with it. And having an ill will against something that's wrong um, is not a bad thing. Wanting something to be right because um, it is just so wrong and it takes advantage of so many people. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that um, feeling or impulse or urge. It's what you do with it that determines whether it's going to be, you know, uh, positive or negative. So that is something that they try to avoid because that ill will that anger causes conflict within themselves. So thought pattern, which is the fixation. And in Ginger's book, it uses thought pattern, which I like to use better because I think it just goes along more with um, the language we use nowadays because it's the, the thoughts. What is going on in the head and what is it fixated towards doing over and over and over again? So the thought pattern for the Enneagram 9 is indolence. Like, what? What is indolence? All right. So indolence is mentally diffusing attention so that you forget what is important and refrain from stating opinions and positions, thereby minimizing tensions and conflict with others. All right. Let me repeat that because you're probably like, wait, what did he just say? All right. Indolence is mentally diffusing attention so that you forget what is important and refrain from stating opinions and positions, thereby minimizing tensions and conflict with others. So, a lot of times nines are really good at minimizing themselves. That's what happens in a lot of these situations. They minimize themselves. They minimize certain situations with conflict and issues. And so they don't have to take positions. Oh, it's not that important. Oh, it's not that important. It doesn't matter. I'm not that important. They minimize all of those things, which is not okay. Because those things are building up. It's So, it's like an example. There's a huge fire in... Um, a nine's kitchen. And they're like, I'll get to it. It won't grow that fast. I mean, come on now. The apartment is fine. Look at it. And there's like smoke everywhere. And then the nine's like, well, you know, there's water in the kitchen anyway. It'll just help kind of put it out. Um, but this is a small example of nines minimizing situations and themselves and the importance of like issues so that they do not have to deal with the conflict and tension that comes from them. All right, so emotional pattern. Emotional pattern is going to be the vice or the passion that each type has. So it's the emotional pattern that's going on with inside of them that's creating the thought pattern that is holding deeply unto the ego. Okay. All right, so the emotional pattern is laziness for the nine. And before people say, oh my goodness, they're just laying around like a slob. And I think of lazy in this way and that way. This is not necessarily your typical way of thinking of laziness. Nope, this is not it. It can be. Don't get me wrong. It can be very slothful laziness where they just lay around and be a couch potato um, and do almost nothing. But what it really is is a lethargy and paying attention to their own feelings, thoughts, and needs, thus disabling desired actions. And so what this laziness may look like, it may look like a very routine way of living life for a nine. They are doing things, but it is so routine that it numbs them out from having to actually do desired actions because they can be doing a lot of different things, but not getting to the very thing that they really want to do or get to. I have worked with different nines who've had multiple jobs, two, three, four jobs, right? But it was all a routine and it was laziness for them because it was not getting to their desired action. It helped to numb them out from doing or getting towards what they really wanted to do or finding out what they want. So that's going to be super important that nines um, understand that laziness, the opposite of laziness for them is not just 
doing and doing in their routine, but it's actually going to be getting towards what are your real feelings of what you want to do? What are your real thoughts of what you want to do? And what actions do you need to take upon yourself in different things to actually get the desired actions and the desired life that you want? Hopefully you have found some value in this podcast episode. You can help to keep this podcast going by supporting us on Patreon.com. Patreon.com is a site where you can support content providers. Podcasts are free to listeners, but not free for creators. It actually costs money and definitely time to produce consistent and weekly podcasts. I podcast because I want to reach people and change our community through the Enneagram. If you want to help in that by supporting me, you can go to patreon.com forward slash do it for the gram. That is P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash do it for the gram. All right. So the path to integration for nines is going to be time to get in touch with that anger. Ooh. So nines, first of all, uh, a lot of nines, as I meet them and they grow, they realize like, oh, yeah, there's anger there. Because at first it's realizing that first you have anger because you have minimized it and put it away so long. That closet door is stuffed. As soon as you open it, it's just coming out, rearing. So it's going to be getting in touch with that anger. And so it's going to be figuring out what in the world am I angry about? Like, really? It's going to be awakening uh, yourself and being like, okay, wake up. Wake up. All right. Okay. Okay. So this is what I'm actually angry about. And so that's going to be part of the path towards integration for the Enneagram 9 because that uh, anger allows them to want to do things. And part of the repressive center for nines is doing. And so getting them doing and moving um, towards and against um, and through the anger actually helps them to integrate themselves with all their centers and themselves. All right, so the path to growth for the nine is into the fire, a.k.a. conflict. Um, please do not go into a fire. Please do not. All right, but... It's going to be going into and through conflict because nines are great at seeing all the different um, viewpoints of the people in the room. They are actually great in conflict because they can look at it without getting overly charged or when they're healthy, underly charged. And they're able to look at the different perspectives and put them together to mediate and find a happy medium, if possible, in those situations. So they're actually great in those. It just kind of disturbs their inner ego of not wanting to deal with it. So eight, so nines are actually great in conflict when they move forward and they do because they can really look at the sides and figure out a way that's going to come out to something harmonious or peaceful that works for majority or everyone in the room. Here are some practical ways. First place, the first thing I'm going to say is get an Enneagram coach. I am like super passionate about, yes, I am an Enneagram coach, but I'm super passionate about people getting an Enneagram coach because they understand um, what's going on in your ego. And sometimes counselors and therapists, which are good, some are good, some are bad, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I wouldn't say don't go to them, <laughs> especially if you are going and they're good, um, still continue to go. And I would say you can still look for them, but get an Enneagram coach because they understand from your ego what is happening and they understand and be able to give you different techniques and tools to help you actually grow quicker and faster. You cut through some of the looking around the fringes of like, maybe who are you? Maybe, or maybe this is you. Maybe you no. Know, when we figure out that Enneagram type, we can start doing some real work. And really start growing quicker and faster and getting towards and pinpointing the actual issues and not playing around with it. We're actually hitting the ailment and not just the symptoms. Uh, the next thing I would say, list it and get it. Make a list. Nines prioritize it as well because nines can make a list. But the issue is a lot of times they have trouble prioritizing it. And it doesn't hurt to have a nine have someone come in and say, hey, and, and ask them, hey. I need help prioritizing my list. I wrote my list out, but I need help prioritizing it because sometimes I don't know exactly what's the most um, prevalent, potent, and important, and urgent thing to do right now. So it's going to be super important for nines to find, um, if they can't do it themselves, but find someone who can help them and say, okay, this is probably the first thing you need to do because it's the most important, and then work their way down. So it's super important for nines to make a list and get it. List it and get it. For the nines, it's going to be super important to get you doing and not to be repressed doing and stuck in um, the ego's idea of harmony, which can be laziness, which allows you not to do the things you really need to be doing uh, to move your life forward and make the impact that I know you actually want to make upon life. 
Uh, the next thing, the practical way is engage with nature. Nature has a kind of way of waking up nines, an outdoor activity um, that can be healthy. It, it just allows nines to um, come in contact. So nines are in the somatic body um, center of intelligence. It just so happens that they're also repressed as well in the same center that they are um, they, they, they see the world through, which is interesting. But nevertheless, getting nines going and in nature helps so much to wake them up to the things they need to do where they can feel accomplished for the day, where they can have more energy for the day and a lot of things. Because a lot of times the routine that nines can get into actually takes energy away from them. When nines are able to do something like get into nature and get into their bodies, it actually provides more energy for them to do other things. And we all know it has a bunch of wonderful chemical effects in our brain to help us do other things. So working out outdoors or walking or even some type of sunroom or something where you can connect with nature and your body is going to be um, just so beneficial for nines. And here's a question um, for uh, a nine to ask themselves daily. What is important to me and how do I work towards it? So I guess that's two questions, but it's like a one two combo kind of question. So once again, it's what is important to me and how do I work towards it? And so what this does, this is going to pinpoint not just what I need to do um, for the day or for tomorrow or for this next week and this next month, but it's actually going to be What's important to me? So it makes a nine look within and say, hmm, because nines are so good at looking at everybody else and knowing what they uh, like to do and just going along with the flow. It's going to be like, but what's your flow? What, what do you actually want to do? What's important to you? And how do I put the steps together and the tools together to actually work towards doing it, which is going to get the nine moving, which is going to be very helpful. So that is a daily question or even three times a day asking yourself that question is going to really reveal some things to you after time and help you to move in a desired way that you want to. So that's super important. So for my nines, wake up, wake up to yourself. You have so much to offer uh, this world. And you're some of like the most peaceful, cool, calm, collected people. But you have a beautiful way when you actually engage conflict of actually helping teach people, helping people to be more empathetic. And you have the capacity to withstand a lot because a lot of times nines have re repressed or held back or put anger in a closet or whatever. They have a high capacity to actually deal with a multitude of of um, strong emotions, of uh, things that can be really tender or harsh or painful, nines have a high capacity for it, and they have the ability to actually put words to it. Nines are actually very, very intelligent. It's just getting them to communicate that with others and understanding that they are not small. They don't have to minimize what they think and what they feel, that they can come forward and say it because they're going to be actually able to enlighten a lot of people and move a lot of people towards a lot of the the goals and a lot of the um, ability to help uh, people help care for people and help understand people nines are great for that when they engage that conflict and they actually talk through those things and give that other perspective or those other perspectives from people in their room or from that um, certain group of people so thank you so much for listening uh, that's all i have for this episode please rate subscribe and share that is rate which helps others find the show subscribe so you can get the latest and greatest episodes and share if you feel this information can benefit someone you know if you need personal life coaching or career coaching i do that through my organization kaizen careers coaching and consulting llc you can contact that at you can contact me at kaizencareers.com milton at kaizencareers.com or 901-334-1644 also if you would like to be a supporter like isidore from canada you can go to patreon.com forward slash do it for the gram. The Patreon community has more access to exclusive content, merchandise, and input on the podcast. I am a seven, so I'm super practical when it comes to things. So in that group, I try to make sure I educate and give you practical ways to grow because uh, it's super important to me. So as soon as I am, when I'm researching and learning and um, learning things, I want to give it to my patron community so that they are on the cutting edge of learning how to um, become not only more self-aware, but self-mastery. Like, how do I take it to the next level? I'm 
so passionate about that. So in that community, that's where I do that as well. Uh, also, if you're in Memphis, please follow the Enneagram 901 page because we have different events um, such as Ennio Conversations, at coffee shops, at Crosstown, um, and then just different things. We've got panels and workshops coming up, but it's just super important to create a community around it because it helps our city and our world. Uh, last thing, if you go to doitforthegrandpodcast.com and subscribe, you will receive a free gift. It's a PDF of each number. You can um, read some really good blog posts as well that are there from different types uh, and uh, just see what it's like to be in that type skin. Yeah. And so for my nines, when you are about to numb out and you are about to chill and conflict is arising and you're looking to slide to the left and slide to the right, don't do it. Make a better choice. Do it for the gram. And we'll see you next time on the next episode. Thanks. Bye.